Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be looking at doing gesso image transfers and this is inspired by a technique I saw from a Dina Wakely class. So I'm just going into a junk journal I have and using craft page because I have a love-hate relationship with craft. I'm being quite generous with the amount of gesso I'm putting down. You can see it's quite opaque and I've just got a picture which is one of my favorite all-time pictures I've got and um, printed out from in a light from a laser printer so it's just onto normal printer paper and I'm just using a scraper to make sure that I've got good adhesion to the page all over now um, I'm fairly impatient person but I did actually leave this uh, side went on did something else and came back to this later so once it had all dried I'm just um, hitting the back with some uh, water in the spray bottle and rubbing off my image. Now you need to be quite gentle when you're doing this um, but as soon as I got that first little bit off and you can see my daughter peeping through there now the transfer quality was amazing. In the past I've only ever used gel medium to do transfers and they've always been a little bit hit and miss for me and I think the reason that this makes such a clear transfer is the fact that you've got that white gesso in the background. So you've got this really opaque background, no matter what you're doing it on, that um, you're getting your transfer from. So I'm just using a wet wipe to help wipe away some of the areas. You can see where I've torn some of the paper and it's gone back to the gesso um, on the edges. So you just do need to be really careful when you're doing this that it is completely dry. Um, and when you're doing it to be fairly gentle because I have in patches rubbed off uh, some of the photo you can see on my husband's shoulder there that his, uh, his shoulder got rubbed off. So just going through, I find working with my fingertips I can feel where the paper needs to be rubbed off. Um, some people suggest using a cloth so you can do that. Um, it does feel really weird on your fingertips. It's sort of you get that really sensitive feeling in your fingertips. Uh, going in with a cloth in the end just to rub off all the extra bits and you can sort of see where it's a little bit furry is where there's still some paper pulp on top of it. So you can go back in and spritz over the top. Now I wasn't too concerned about that because I knew I was going to cover over some of those edges already. Um, but I did want to have a clear transfer of both faces on the photo. Um, particularly on my daughter to make sure that that was the central focus and sort of why I chose to put it in the center of the page too. You can see when you spritz the water over it, you, it suddenly gets that intense color so you know where the paper pulp is and where you need to remove it. So once you're happy with how much paper that you have removed, then you can go on to doing bits and pieces in the background. So I'm just making sure it's dry. By drying it off you can kind of see where you still need to work on and choose if you want to or not. I was quite happy with how it sort of ended up. So you've got a really clear transfer there. Now the whole point of doing an image transfer is you never want it to be particularly perfect anyway. If you did I would just stick the original paint picture in and um, by putting it in this way you do get a different effect. So now I'm just using a small gel print um, to do some bits and pieces around the back of my page. And I'm just brayering off the excess paint I had onto my page directly. So I've just put a stencil onto my gel print and used some paper that I had sitting around to um, press through the stencil. So I just get left with the impression on my page. Now when I did it, it was fairly light, so I've gone in with a deeper colour now. And again, I'm just rolling off the extra onto my page. And you can see me pressing off the extra and then printing onto my page. So I get this sort of imperfect stamped impression onto my image. With the image I chose, um, it had that large white space at the, the top which I wanted to fill in. So that's why I'm sort of doing this in the background. So going back in again with my white, just to get a more opaque colour over the top, um, to add over the blue that I've brayed on the top and the bottom. Doing exactly the same technique with that piece of paper that I've got, um, taking off the extra ink. Now the great thing about using a gel print is that you've got 
all these extra ghost prints that you can use. So that purple piece of paper with these stencil prints on it of the flowers, I'm going to use in another piece later on. Um, you don't waste anything doing this process. So now I've sort of done my gel prints in the background, I'm going to start adding some extra bits and pieces to this. Now this piece was inspired by Dina Wakeley, as I said in the introduction. It was um, inspired by a class that she did for Creative Jumpstart and um, I'd never done, the thing that really got me about it was um, hearing image transfer. I, I love doing image transfers but I've never ever done it with gesso before so I really had to try it out. And once I did it I was addicted. So I, um, I will put in um, at the end another uh, image of a page that I did in this journal, in fact on the other side of this um, page that I'm working on at the moment, of another gel um, gesso transfer that I've done in, in a similar style. In, in that transfer I decided to use a colour image, so it was a, a colour laser print because while it worked beautifully with a black and white I was interested to see if it would work with a colour image and it does really well. So. Um, you're not stuck with just using black and white, you can use any colours you want. The hearts that you can see me cutting out at the moment are again from a gel print that I had. These were just used up pages. Um, if you watched one of my previous videos on doing image transfers using a jelly plate, you will see this piece of paper. It was one I used to mop up the colour off the edges of the pages. So it came up with some really nice prints and I figured I could use it in this way. Now you can see me cutting out the little hearts there and I'm really glad I cut them out carefully because I ended up using them in the end. I decided I didn't want that black line that I drew about around it. Um, I wanted just to have the clean hearts but those bits and pieces came in really handy. I'm just going in and journaling about the day that these photos were taken using some really messy journaling and then gluing down the hearts that I've got in lots of different ways on the page. Um, and I just love sort of the combination of that outline with the solid hearts. By having the solid hearts on there, it was just a little bit too much. It was too blocky, I think. And by having those open hearts, it just balanced out the page that bit better. So I'm going in now with, um, this is Gina K Connect glue. It's got a really fine tip on it and it's fabulous glue. It's It sticks immediately. I've never had any issues with it moving. Even though it's a PVA type glue, um, it doesn't slip down the page. It just sticks where it's supposed to, which is fabulous for me. Um, also, for really fine cut out pieces like those little hearts, it's really easy to glue down. So I'm just making sure that everything's stuck down really well. Um, the paper that the gel prints have been done on are um, from an old encyclopedia, so they're quite fine papers, which works well, um, but can be tricky to glue down occasionally. Uh, if you don't have a decent wet glue, just using a glue stick would probably be the best way to glue something like that down. So once I'd finished doing that, I felt that this page needed a title in some way, shape or form. I'm also just going in with the hearts to put some white on it again to sort of blend it in the background and make them look a little bit more sketchy and more deliberate. Now in this junk journal, um, I've chosen to make it like a scrapbooky junk journal um, and put photos in it. I, I don't necessarily scrapbook all the time. Um, I do have photos floating around in my studio and I'd like to have somewhere for them to go. So I figured this is a good compromise that I could get my mixed media on but add some photos in as well. So some pages are a little bit more scrapbooky, some pages like this are a lot more uh, mixed media. But I'm loving the effect of having something so random in my journal and being able to have a house for all my photos that I really treasure and doing it in a way that I really enjoy doing them. So with the leftover bits of the gel um, paper that I had, I've just cut out some really random letters 
in the circle for the or in the um, O for love I just fold it over in half and cut out a little heart shape as well just to echo the other hearts on the page and ended up gluing it down and really loving this title so it's just simple love this um, but this is one of my favorite photos so it was just perfect for this page and I like overlapping the title over the journaling because while the journaling was important and I loved it it wasn't the central focus of this page it added some interest to the background once I'd written it down I didn't need to write it again or read it again it was just there in the background to add to what was happening in the, in the foreground so just outlining the title with a white Posca paint pen and this page is done. Um, I really encourage you, if you haven't done gel prints before, uh, I'm sorry, gel prints, uh, gesso transfers before, have a go. They are super, super simple. And with the amount that I've done in the last few weeks, they are fairly reliable as well. Um, certainly much more so than the um, gel medium transfers that I've done in the past. Um, you just, just get this beautiful, solid, opaque colour and image. Thank you so much for watching. Please have a go at this and let me know how you went with your transfers too. Thank you for watching and until next time, bye for now.